Sonos are actually uh, one of the uh, surgeries that we, we have to perform even at this time. And uh, uh, I, I was uh, very impressed to see the standard of presentations and I really have to, not much to add but uh, to understand uh, the surgeon also has to understand a bit of the pathology and how that translates to the management of transurethral bladder cancer. And as we know that uh, there are uh, 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 various types of bladder cancer procedure, uh, including non-invas, invasive tumors, invasive tumors, and carcinoma in situ of uh, varying degrees of frequency and uh, varying degrees of progression. And uh, it is our job to find out the ones which are particularly dangerous, the, the high-grade tumors, the T1 tumors, and the carcinoma in, um, in situ if it is present and if the uh, bladder tumor is invasive. Many a time, with the aid of preoperative imaging, we can come to a, uh, we can, uh, we can a preoperative um, opinion as to what sort of a tumor we are dealing with. And as we will see, as all the, all the presenters have shown that this impacts how we, how, how we treat the patient, whether we give any adjuvant therapy and what the nature of complications may be. Um, um, 50 to 70% of patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer have a recurrence within five years. And 20% um, of them are low-grade recurrences, but 40% are worsening recurrences and five to 20% progress to invasive tumor. So when we are resecting a tumor, we have to assign a risk factor to the disease by the aid of clinical staging, the size, the location, the, well, not the location, the multiplicity of tumors, uh, the size of the tumor, and, the, um, and, and various characteristics. And uh, we have to ensure at the completion of the resection that uh, uh, the resection has been adequate. Muscle fibers have been exposed at the base. Uh, we have done what uh, Dr. Tongaoka referred to as a fractional resection. We have got samples from <coughs> all around, and we have we have to ensure at the end of the resection there are no complications. And uh, once we are happy that we've done an adequate resection, uh, we have to take a decision as to whether to take a random bladder biopsy or take a pr uh, prostatic urethral biopsy. And I really, nothing to add to, uh, uh, to the previous presenters uh, who have actually reviewed the literature in great details and, and have uh, summarized the indications. But I'll just uh, highlight a few points that, uh, that um, uh, uh, NBI is now available in many of our centers. Um, and uh, there is certain, even though PDD biopsies are, we read in the literature, NBI guided biopsies have a role to play in deciding who, who has a random bladder biopsy. Uh, there is no literature on SPICE imaging yet, but uh, the store SPICE system is now available in many of us. And maybe I can suggest that uh, maybe one of us takes this up and. Um, uh, presents uh, uh, some data to us in due course as to whether SPICE imaging can help us in deciding which pay patients need a random light of biopsy. So uh, the next issue is about single installation chemotherapy. We know that it reduces the relative um, uh, risk of recurrence by 35% and five-year recurrence rates by 14%. It is not effective in patients with a prior recurrence rate of more than one recurrence per year. It does not prolong either progression or survival. Um, it is not effective in patients with high risk tumors. And uh, um, so it is really the single installation chemotherapy falls into this, uh, falls into a category of patients who we have to identify a low risk uh, by endoscopic appearances at the completion and uh, after we've completed the resection. This is why you, you can look, uh, look into the literature and see that uh, post-operative installation of chemotherapy picked up widely despite the fact that the data has been there for almost 25, 30 years. The first MRC trials were started in 1986. So but I think more and more uh, people are, um, urologists are, uh, are, are using it in suitable cases. So, uh, but to use it safely, we must use the URTC scoring system. And, uh, and uh, this Dr. Adler has uh, clearly mentioned that, you know, uh, these patients, uh, you have to select your case properly. Uh, what I really wanted to point out, does single uh, um, installation of uh, mitomycin, which is the most commonly utilized agent, can it cause harm? 
Uh, I have mentioned that it does not influence the long-term course of the disease. There was uh, uh, a lamb study which, uh, which studied as to whether it can cause more new tumors, but that is also not, there's no evidence to that. But it has its own complications. It is a toxic drug, both for the patient and for the, and the doctor has to take adequate precautions. You can get a slough at the resected area, which can confuse your follow-up uh, uh, cystoscopy. When that slough heals, you can get a red area at the site of mitomycin, in the, uh, uh, post mitomycin, which can you can miss for cancer, and the pathologist may miss for cancer. And of course, there's always the fear of extravasation. If, uh, despite the, your best assessment, in some uh, patients there will be a small deep bite, and mitomycin may leak. Uh, I will stress that uh, we, we as urologists do not actually take the due precautions which both the patient and the doctor must take. You know, we must treat, we, we treat intravisital chemotherapy very lightly and neither do we use, we are very, very aware of personal protective equipment now and the doctor must uh, use personal protective equipment when using mitomycin, especially there may be spillage and if it touches mucous membranes and skin surfaces, there can be a lot of irritation. There are issues about availability of mitomycin and gemcitabine is emerging as an option, but I think a few more studies are required before it becomes a standard of care. It is intuitive to use bladder irrigation after um, uh, uh, bladder tumor resection. I think most of us have been using bladder ir uh, irrigation all along if, if, because uh, in transudital resection, there is tumor spillage. Uh, is the equivalent of tumor spillage during open surgery. And what do we do when we have tumor spillage? We wash it, irrigate out, and we often use water. But it seems that saline is the bladder irrigation of choice. It's interesting to note that there are no big data on these, but they are all the control arms of the various trials on intracycle chemotherapy, um, single instigation chemotherapy. So, um, uh, and of course, uh, we've had uh, uh, all faced these nightmare scenarios of clot retention, of uh, uh, jerks uh, from explosions, bladder bursts, obturated uh, uh, jerks causing clasps and ruptures of the bladder. And uh, can, but can jerks be truly prevented? I think most of us see that even the general anesthesia, even uh, you know, you do get uh, jerks. You have to predict the jerk from the position of the tumor. Sometimes you can identify pulsation of the obturated artery uh, uh, on the lateral wall of the bladder. You've got to develop that, uh, that hunch and the reflex and cut with an underfilled bladder and cut, start with the lowest cut current. There is um, um, manual thigh abduction by a, by a technician or someone by a, by a circulating nurse is a good way to prevent uh, bladder jerks. Just keep the thigh abducted by with your hand uh, manually. And uh, I think that if the resection is incomplete, there's no shame in continuing the bladder tumor destruction with the ball diathermy because with the coagulation current, jerks are less. And uh, uh, you will obviously have combination of jerks with perforation, jerk perforation with residual tumor, jerk perforation and bleeding. And these are all uh, nightmare scenarios. And then um, our speakers have uh, explained very clearly how clot retention is managed. Most difficult is the mature post tranexamic acid clot, which cannot be evacuated. And um, uh, there can be clot retention with perforation and clot retention with infected with hemophilia. And one has to use all one surgical vials and uh, the best team works to handle this. And uh, similarly with bladder exploration and perforation, what uh, I really wanted to add to what the other speakers uh, have said is that desperate problems need desperate solutions. And there should be no shame in opening up the patient and doing um, open surgery as required. There, there will be occasions when even an emergency spectrum may, uh, may be required. That's all. I think I really enjoyed this session and uh, there were uh, excellent presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Go to Sarkar.